Hello. Thanks for joining me today. My name is Anne Lazardi. I'm a doctor of nursing practice. Today we're talking about prostate cancer, the current treatment landscape. These are my disclosures. I am a medical science liaison with Johnson & Johnson Innovative Medicine. My background includes I was a doctor of nursing practice at Thomas Jefferson University in Philadelphia for nearly 17 years, treating mostly GU oncology patients. I was the director of the American Urological Association APP program. I was also a board member of the Urology Care Foundation. So starting with classification of disease stages, we see patients present with localized prostate cancer, locally advanced disease, meaning it has spread just beyond the prostate, biochemical recurrence, which we'll define shortly, metastatic hormone-sensitive prostate cancer, or MHSPC, also called metastatic castrate-sensitive disease, or MCSPC, and then metastatic castrate-resistant prostate cancer, or MCRPC. Looking at localized prostate cancer, we see patients present with low-risk disease and intermediate-risk disease. In low-risk disease, the preferred treatment is active surveillance. Other options include radical prostatectomy or radiation. And more commonly, we sometimes do see focal therapy. In intermediate risk disease, the recommended treatments include radical prostatectomy or radiation therapy with or without androgen deprivation therapy, or what we call ADT. Additionally, some patients may undergo brachytherapy, which historically was called radiation seeds. In both cases, some patients may opt for focal therapy. In all cases, it's important to consider the side effects that are associated with each treatment modality. In patients with locally advanced prostate cancer, a radical prostatectomy with pelvic lymph node dissection is a treatment option. Radiation therapy with long-duration ADT or androgen deprivation therapy, typically for two to three years, is an option. And then some patients may receive neoadjuvant, meaning before treatment, or adjuvant, meaning after treatment, with either ADT with or without additional treatment. Some patients do undergo an MRI or PSMA for guidance. In patients with a biochemical recurrence, this means they have a rising PSA after curative therapy. So they've had either their prostate removed with a radical prostatectomy, or they've had curative radiation therapy and their PSA begins to rise sometime after treatment. Management depends on PSA kinetics, time to recurrence, and imaging findings, either with MRI or PSMA PET. Salvage radiation therapy may be used either with or without ADT, and some patients may opt for observation. In patients with MCSPC, or metastatic castrate-sensitive prostate cancer, ADT is the standard of care, and it's typically utilized throughout the continuum of treatment. In these patients, because they have this androgen deprivation therapy, it's, con it's important to consider their bone health. Some patients may undergo treatment with bisphosphonates or denosumab. Combination therapies do show increased overall survival. We've seen patients undergo ADT plus docetaxel, a chemotherapeutic agent. We've also seen patients receive ADT plus novel hormonal agents, including abiraterone, enzalutamide, apalutamide, and darolutamide. And some patients will even receive triplet therapy, so three treatments at the same time. In patients with CRPC, castrate-resistant prostate cancer, that means there's disease progression despite castration levels. That means that they're Testosterone is basically zero, but their disease is continuing to progress. In patients with non-metastatic CRPC, we don't see this as often with the evolution of PSMA screening, but in this patient population, improved agents include ADT plus enzalutamide, apalutamide, or darolutamide. And in patients with metastatic CRPC, we see patients undergo treatment with ADT plus abiraterone or ADT plus enzalutamide. Also, docetaxel or cabazitaxel may be used. Radium-223 may be used. That's indicated for bone metastases only. The PARP inhibitors are, are indicated in some patients with BRCA1 or 2 mutations. And then PSMA-targeted therapies are also sometimes used. There is a stronger and stronger need for germline and somatic testing. As time goes on, we learn more and more about these mutations. So germline indicates that the patient has inherited the mutation, and somatic, that's looking at the tumor itself, so we see mutations in the tumor itself. DNA repair gene mutations include BRCA1 and 2, ATM, CHEC2. These are just a few. There are certainly many others. And then there's HRR mutations, and that's where we see the PARP inhibitors used. In these DNA mismatch repair tumors, immunotherapy is indicated, 
And next generation genomic sequencing incre is increasingly used for personalized therapy. We also see a lot of emerging therapies and ongoing clinical trials. So some of those, certainly not all, are listed here. So bipolar angina therapies, so cycling the testosterone levels, novel PSMA targeted therapies or bispecifics, immunotherapy combinations, and AKT inhibitors in P10 deficient tumors. It's really important, especially in patients who have advanced disease, to have a multidisciplinary approach. And some of, those, some of those roles include the urologist, the medical oncologist, the radiation oncologist, genetics, social work, radiologist, tumor board, and again, all using the shared decision-making model. These are my references. You can see at the bottom there some of the randomized controlled trials that were really important in developing some of these treatment modalities. And I thank you for your time.